Welcome to the DBW presentation for the Department of Works Garage. Um, first, I'd like to introduce uh, Dan Dwyer. Hello, everyone. Dan Dwyer is uh, part of the committee, and um, I was part of the committee as well. And what we did was we got the committee members together by selecting people from the residences, uh, the residences in town as well as people from the DPW, um, the workers, as well as the staff for the DPW, the town manager and Paul McCalley. Um, the committee members came from such a diverse group that the diverse group was asked prior to the meeting what type of things that they would like. And not only did we go as far as selecting the committee members, but we also had gone down and talking to some of the people that were actually working at the DPW garage. And when we worked with dealing with the, the talking of, of the DPW garage, we found out that the people there weren't looking for any Taj Mahal. They were just looking for a, a nice, comfortable place to be able to work and become more efficient. So let me leave it to Dan for a little bit about how they were selected. Um, I think what was important not to have a, a an inside crowd so to speak and it was nice that we had three different residences we had several people put their name in but the committee only can only be so large so having um, three residences on the board and and having the town manager involved and Paul McCallie again as you mentioned from the financial director um, always is more beneficial because they can they're the ones who are gonna have to deal with the budget items and that kind of thing but um, the workers in particular we're able to give some insight, obviously. And I know some people may want to criticize, well, if you work there, then obviously they're pro-building. But it wasn't really the case. The last thing that they wanted to do was come up with a building that was just extravagant or something that didn't have a chance of passing. So I think it was important that even the people who worked there were involved in the whole discussion. And that was probably the best thing that we did. I agree with you, and uh, do you remember what the original value of the building was that they presented to us at the onset from the design company? It was over $8 million, and you know we paid a consultant, um, I want to say in the $20,000 range, which was worth it, and you know, you, you always hate to spend money on consulting and that type of thing, but this was a very big building to, to go over, but that study went over our needs at the current site, and um, I think based on a town our size, based on the amount of trucks and mechanics and plows, et cetera, um, this professional engineering company came back with some drawings and I think we were pretty much blown away would be the word. I would say more than blown I'd away. All, and all seven of us on the council were had our mouths open about $8 million. It, 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 boy, was it beautiful, it right? It was beautiful, but it it's, was unacceptable. It was unacceptable. So... One of the things we did, we took the team approach to try and cut the $8.9 million out of the, uh, out of the equation and start fresh with um, a building that would actually provide for more efficiencies as well as take care of the uh, staff that actually work in the DPW garage. So the approach to cut approximately $5.5 .5 million and provide the uh, building that would meet those needs was our overall mandate. So that's what we decided to do. And one of the things we did, we did a little um, project, so to speak, where we used post-it notes and we gave them all to the different members of the committee. And we identified, first of all, which parts of the building were important. You know, what was the most important thing? For instance, was it storage of vehicles? Was it a lunchroom? Was it mechanical bays? Mechanical bays. The whole the whole gamut of the actual use of the building. And everybody had to take their post-it notes and place them there, and that would be their vote for what the most important things were. And once we did that process, we determined that we could identify the top five or the top ten, if I remember. Priorities. And that's where we moved on from there. Now, one of the ways we did it was we actually looked at using the existing building and the utilization of the existing building came into play by the fact that nobody seemed to have an answer. They, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but the, the design people 
when they first presented to the town council made a statement that um, it wasn't cost effective to use the Old existing building. Right. And, and their eight and their eight million dollar figure was based on completely leveling the site altogether. There would have been nothing left standing. Correct. So, which in itself is obviously very expensive to do, but that was their vision. But nobody could give us a reason what nobody could give us a price tag of why it wasn't cost effective. And that set up a red flag for myself as well as Dan and we decided we wanted answers for that. So we ended up talking to some other engineers, and the other engineers came down and said, you can use the metal, you can use the, uh, the cement pad that it's on. Um, it does meet the requirements for the snow loads, etc." The steel the, skeleton of the, the old The skeleton building. of the old yep. building. They, they said it was in good shape as far as the, the shell goes, the shell being, again, the steel skeleton and the, uh, and the pad. And they even did coring to make sure that the pad would handle and of a new weight load of a different roof and different uh, sides. So that being said, we decided that we were going to utilize that building to um, basically store some of the equipment that we have. Now, some of the some of the equipment originally the design that they came out with. This was the 8.9 million dollar design was to house all of these uh, trucks inside during the winter, which was a great idea, but it was just not well spent money because you could get the majority of the fleet, the first fleet that has to kick out during a snowstorm, out on the roads quicker by providing storage for those units inside that building, the older building. And also called it more of a staging area. Staging area staging, for snowstorm. Right. For once the winter season starts, it's easier to have the salt and sand in, in a staging area where they're ready to go and stays dry. So that made a big difference. So that's the direction we took. And you can't really build onto an existing building like that because then you have different weight loads. So we decided that we would utilize that space for the uh, extra storage area. And that would give us a place to go ahead and keep running while they built a new town garage so that we wouldn't miss a, miss a beat in the action because... It's very important to understand, and this is something I learned probably six years ago only because I overheard a conversation. The building itself not only takes care of um, the vehicles for the DPW, but it, always take, it also maintains the police department, the fire department's build, I mean vehicles, the staff's vehicles. And that being said, it, it provided me a better understanding that this isn't just a DPW garage. This is more or less a maintenance garage for all the town vehicles. Um, so one other thing we did, and I'll let Dan talk about it, is we went to take a little visit down at the DPW. And you want to tell them what we, what sure. we all saw? Um, <clears throat> currently, it's, and I've mentioned this before, so if I if I sound like a broken record, I don't mean to, but... When we ask a, a tractor supply uh, company to come in town or, or the new Home Depot, which isn't so new anymore, or, or any Dunkin' Donuts, they have to follow current codes uh, involving from structure to safety to bathrooms, uh, parking spaces, all that. It probably won't come to anybody else's surprise that um, the current building really meets nothing in today's modern standard. And it, it, what, what bothers me more as, a, as being in the government um, which is an odd, odd way of putting it, is we, f we can force the, to do the right thing to Tractor Supply and the Dunkin' Donuts in town, but we don't, we don't police ourselves in the same way. Um, the garage at, at its current uh, status is just very subpar. Um, we've had, uh, we'd like to even expand to maybe some women would like to come and, and be part of that team down there. I think they've had one or two women who've lasted six months or a year and then they quit. Um, there's no adequate bathrooms. It just comes down to some of the basic needs of um, having a, a proper kitchen facility uh, along with um, uh, rest area and, and, um, and uh, bathroom facilities and showers uh, where these guys, uh, not unlike uh, the fire department when they get, come back from a fire or something, they've got no place else to clean up. Um, they literally if they come into their uh, locker room, which is no bigger than a uh, very large uh, walk-in closet, 
and it's just nothing there nothing there meets any common standard for the amount of people that they have which is um, uh, just under 30 people I believe um, women in general um, if we we're going to attract uh, anybody else uh, from the opposite sex at the highway department uh, really want to want to work in that environment from the standpoint of expanding the mechanical bays uh, for the fleet that uh, Dave you just described from the fire department to the police vehicles um, there just isn't enough room and there hasn't been enough room for, for a long time which brings you back to why we decided if you go to the picture on TV this is the this is the back of the of the current building and depending on what picture you're seeing um, that building would be stripped down to its shell and saved um, in and in the scheme of things that's why this project is costing um, drastically a lot less money than it would have the the engineering design as we said was uh, over eight million we're going to be asking the voters come April for a, um, a 3.3 million dollar bond and part of that reason why we're able to I, I get that price to to be affordable which we hope is affordable to you the residents is that we're we're utilizing the existing structure of the current garage um, in the plans but um, I don't know what else uh, I can add to that part other other than the, the let's cut back from the picture then yeah. and um, one of the one of the things was actually utilizing that building utilizing made a big the building. difference. Um, utilizing that building performs a couple of different functions by being able to house the more expensive vehicles that we have. Those vehicles will last longer. Well. In essence, you've got not only those vehicles lasting longer, but there's a savings behind it. There's a savings in efficiencies, and there's a savings in the cost of capital equipment. All right. And obviously, the trucks are very expensive. Um, they which, we le which we learned we have 18 of them. Yeah, there's you think 18 trucks. When you, when you see counselors, you think we have all the answers. Believe me, we don't. But you, in this position that we have, you learn an awful lot. And it was just a couple of years ago when you start – asking, well, how many police cars do we have? How many fire trucks? How many plow trucks? Uh, when you find out, I don't think the average person in town would have any idea that we own and operate 18 plow trucks. And that's the number that we need uh, to plow our town. So it, it, things like that, if you were to add up all the fleet, I forget off the top of my head right now, it was four or five million dollars in, in assets of, of vehicles easily it, I think we, it's higher than that we have so we have a five and we're being conservative and we say we have a five million dollar fleet of vehicles in town um, and they need to be taken care of in a better way and and one of the one of this uh, uh, this project this new T, uh, DPW garage would will accomplish that and by addressing that you also address the fact that if they can maintain all of the other cars in the fleet, the police and the fire, et cetera, um, a lot of those cars are transferred down to different um, departments, staff departments, and the only reason they can transfer them down is because they've been well maintained right. by the people at the DPW. Um, they might not qualify for being able to be used at the police department after so many miles because they're just unreliable. However, if they get them reliable enough to the fact that the staff can use them and you know if it doesn't start one day that's one thing you know you can always go back and work on that vehicle yeah. but you can't have a, a fleet of police cars not starting you can't have a fleet of trucks not starting and the initial rollout um, and you touched base on it earlier the initial rollout of the trucks in in lieu of a storm coming Having them ready to go and hit the ground running is a big, a big thing for the DPW because right. they're they're on pins and needles waiting for the snowflakes to hit, and they're providing your streets, you know, with a good snow plowing effort and sanding effort. Um, if you've ever, and this is behind the scenes, obviously, but if you've ever been involved in, uh, you know, a snowstorm or a windstorm or or something of that nature and you're in the emergency management uh, portion of the, the meetings and you're sitting there with the, the fire chief and he's coordinating the windstorm and the electricity problems with PSNH and you've got the police coordinating wires down and there's quite a bit that goes on and you can't have all that stuff going on with no vehicles or, 
are not working or unreliable. Um, I do want to I do want to go back and touch base about the people that were asked. People at the DPW were asked if what was more important to them. I think a lot of them, if not probably all of them, would say we just want a little bit more space to do this spot, or we want a little bit more space to do this this type of maintenance. Um, they don't have that space right now because, you know, if they if they get a vehicle in there and they got to tear apart something, they don't have the space to work. Um, a lot of them would be probably happy with just a, a new rug, some new furniture, and some paint, but we're beyond that. It's important to note that the DPW is 40 years old. The garage yeah. is approximately 40 years old, and what they've done to, to get by in the last 40 years was basically go out on their own and patch. They yeah. add. Add-ons. They yeah. added their own mezzanine. They, you know, scavenged lumber from the dump, or they scavenged metal from here and there, and they've patched the ceilings, the walls, etc. Windows. Windows. I mean, everything. I mean, there's, there's actually one window up there that if you lean on, you'll probably fall out into the parking lot. And, and if I can interrupt you, for people who are watching, it's important. If you have any doubts or you don't have any... If you don't, if you if you're for the project or not, please stop by. Um, you can come out unannounced. If they can bring, walk you through it, they will. If not, they'll tell you to come back at a certain time. But you really should see it for yourself to convince yourself um, how bad it is or or how much it's needed. But uh, you're always welcome to go down, knock on the door, walk walk into the lobby, um, watch your head <laughs> with, yeah. with the ice. But uh, uh, you. Adam from the uh, from the from the building and everybody else, the whole team down there has always has told us to to let anybody know. Anytime anybody wants to go down there and take a look for themselves, you're always welcome. And you'll see a video later on after this presentation. But the video you're going to see was not staged. What you see in there is what you get. It, nothing was staged to make it look like oh we need more space, so they sure. parked all the vehicles in there. It was made to show the residents of Merrimack exactly what the people at the EPW were working with. On a day-to-day -day basis. On a day-to-day -day basis. And personally, if I had to go to a workplace like that, I'd quit my job and I wouldn't go back in. I'd find another job. That's how old and decrepit that building is. And they've done such a, such a great job by piecemealing it, but it's time not to piecemeal anymore. You just can't keep, you know, piecemealing and bandaging a building that's, you know, 40 years old. It just... It's impossible to do and, and to meet codes. And it's not so much that it's just 40. Uh, if anybody who's been in town for 30 or 40 years, uh, what was the population 30 years ago? 6,000 6, people? 6,000 maybe. Today we're 27,000. So, I mean, the, yes, the building footprint that you see um, is 40 years old, but the fact is this town has tripled the size that it once was. Therefore, we've got triple the police cars, triple the fire almost department quad, vehicles. Almost quadrupled the size. Almost quadrupled. That's true. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, so keep that in mind. It isn't just the age of the building. It is the amount of work and the amount of people. Um, uh, Forty years ago, maybe there were seven, seven guys working for the highway department or something like that. You know, and today we have a staff of almost 30 people. So um, just keep that in mind. That being said, the DPW itself does wonders with what they have. And for them to go out and even their break room for instance their break room has old couches and chairs and microwaves and things of that nature in it but it all comes from one place the transfer station um, i think that's where they actually found all their furniture <laughs> their picnic if you if you were to go down there and see where they uh, have their lunch there's a picnic table set up in the area where there's exhaust and where there's you welding. know people welding and you know, it's dusty as all get out, and the air infiltration, air infiltration of quality is horrible, and we're asking these people to sit down at a picnic table and have their lunch, and I talked to one DPW uh, staff member, and he said, when we're in a snowstorm or we're working in the summertime, I won't even come in to eat. I'll eat outside in my truck. It's cleaner. So... Just goes to show you that, you know, they're not asking for a lot. You know, just a little bit is is all they wanted. But we're at the point in time right now where the the bonds are getting paid off. And I'll let, I'll let Dan talk a little bit about the bonds. One of the – it sounds so cliche, but I, um, 
timing is everything. And once this project uh, started getting underway, we realized with Paul McCallie's help and, and Eileen uh, that we, as a town, were in a great position on the timing of coming to you, the residents, for this project. What do I mean by that? Uh, we've had several bonds, uh, not several, uh, it's a couple outstanding bonds that are winding down. They're in their last two to three years, uh, whether it was some bri bridge bonding and uh, wastewater treatment bonding. Though at the same time that those bonds are going to be paid off, this is presenting itself to be a good time to bring this building to the public. Um, again, for three million or so, a little over three million dollars for a 25 year, was it or? 30 year bond. 30 year bond. In which Paul McCallie, our financial director, will do another segment of, of this continuing show to explain those financial benefits. But there was a, a chance of going with a 40-year bond, and we were going to save hundreds of thousands, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars by an in interest by making it a 30-year bond instead. But what's happening is the timing. When these bonds are getting paid off, if this project was to come come uh, to fruition. Um, our tax rate will stay the, ultimately the same. Um, again, I'll let Paul speak more to the nitty gritty of the, of the cents, but it's more like a 12 cent to a 17 cent increase um, on any given year. And those, those, uh, those increases change as those years progress. But if we could get this passed now, we would be in the same financial debt that we currently are, which is good. We're an excellent debt ratio uh, for a town right now of our size, we're probably actually, I think we're one of the best. We're probably I the, think we are the best. Probably, we may be the best town on, on our, uh, our own personal credit rating, uh, on our sound uh, um, financial standing because we have such a low debt. And I think it's because we've managed well, not just, just me and this board, but previous boards have been very reluctant to go into long-term debt, such as, let's say, Bedford. If you remember in the newspapers uh, a year or two ago, they went out and borrowed $300 million or, or $30 million, to me it was $30 million for roads. And it got knocked down. They did not it, vote for and it. And they, did not, they didn't vote for it. Um, then they came, I think they voted for it again the following year, though. But at a lesser value. At a lesser like value. Maybe a quarter of the value of what they asked. The point is they're borrowing millions and millions of dollars for roads, which is something that you should budget every year for. We try to, we try to budget between 600000 a bad year, 800000 is a good year. The town manager, which we disagree a little bit, would like to have a million dollars a year. We, um, but we budget this year about $800,000 a year to pave our roads. This is something that I feel very strongly we should always be budgeting that way. You don't want to get to the point like Bedford or some other town where you haven't budgeted for several years and your roads are in really bad shape. Uh, Merrimack is in really great shape right now on borrowing some money for an infrastructure project. So kind of in closing on this subject, when our other two bonds are about to be paid off, this building could be um, added to the current rate, and therefore we end up being right, right where we started from. The, within a penny or two? Within a penny or two. And or that, in some cases less. You never know. That's right. Because we don't have that schedule in front of us. Um, and whether that's being we'll lucky about. or good or a combination of both, it just happens to be, I think this town council this year felt obligated to come to you, the voters, in April, uh, with this project, and I think a lot of it had to do with the timing. The t one, the building was very much needed, but the financially, I think it was something that we all could get behind. And not only that, but if we add one more item into it, because of the economy, now's the time to be building because it's cheaper to build now than it is in the heyday. If yeah. everybody's spending money at the same time, then it's, it's supply and demand. Right. I mean, if they can get more money from someone else, they go into that job, so the price starts to creep up. Right. Uh, right now, the economy, obviously, everybody knows it's not the greatest in the world, but, you know, if you have to take advantage of that, this is one of the things you'd want to take advantage of. Right. Um, the cost of building the building today will be much less than it will be in a year or two, should the economy change and, and go dramatically in the other direction. Right. And sooner or later, the economy will change. And when it does change, so does the price tag. And during all of that, We've also lost the efficiencies if we didn't build the town garage. And there are some inherent ef efficiencies built into it from the standpoint of they'll be able to react quicker. They'll be able to 
have more space where they're not moving things around to get to something else to start the different project because they also do the signage. Um, so if they're in the middle of making signs and they don't have the room, what they got to do is they got to pull the trucks out and make the signs and then pull the trucks back in and interrupt the signs. So there's, there's a lot of different efficiencies that can come out of this. Right. And the efficiencies are very, very, very important. So with that being said, I'm going to ask that each and every resident become informed about this issue and support the warrant article at the ballot for the DPW building. Um, it's time. It's the municipality part has not built a building since I can remember. I don't know if we have. And, uh, I don't not, think we in, have. In, in my lifetime, as far as being in the town of Merrimack since 95, um, the only major construction that took place was the, was the renovation of the town hall. And that was a renovation. And that was a renovation. But as far as, a, as something new, um, I don't think something new has been in town other than the school, other than the new school building. Um, but that that's it. The police department, that's and the school been there. Building, and the school building isn't ours. That's part of the Right. The, we're talking about the municipality. Yeah, as far as municipality, maybe the, school the last district's different. The last biggest change was probably the current police station. Yep. Right. I can't think. I can't think of anything. And that else. wasn't that wasn't built either. That was that's right. That, that was, was a another piece of property that they remodeled. To that would fall under a renovation as well. Yeah. Right. And sometimes it, you know it's nice when you can renovate. Um, you know, not everybody in town. I, I I think a lot of we look at this beautiful town hall that we have now, and I think people forget that there was a 35-year tenant called the Merrimack District Court, <laughs> Courthouse who was here. Well, I don't know about you, uh, but if you have a tenant for 35 years and they move away, you generally have to renovate. And that's what we did. And I, 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 think, it's turned out, uh, I think it's turned out fabulous. And that is a project, the last big project that the town has approved of. Um, I, I guess for me, in closing, the biggest sale factor I would like to extend to the voters is a lot of people on this committee worked awfully hard to make it affordable. And, and, and we've talked about the needs. What do you need and what do you want versus? And that was just really worked on. It's by no mistake that a professional company, as you said, started off with an $8 million project, and our town committee got it to $3 million. And I think and hope that the town would uh, trust the work that was put into that building and... Um, and uh, take it for what it's for that I don't think if we had any doubts that this was not the right thing to do we wouldn't be sitting here and and I'll be upfront with you yes we are trying to sell this this is this is a sales pitch but more importantly what me and Dave said to the whole committee at the beginning when we decided to do this that we wanted to make sure that everybody in town knew about it every voter when you get into that booth you're not going to see the ballot and go oh there's a highway garage that would be a failure on our part. So we wanted to make sure that we sold it, did the video, did the video again, and bring it up so there was no surprises from everybody. So the electorate would be well informed that when they got in the booth, they would say, oh, yeah, whether you're for it or against it, that's fine. But at least you knew beforehand that there was a building uh, being asked of you to support, and you weren't going to be surprised when you walked in. And, and you know, that being said, the effort and the the workload that we put on our own committee was pretty heavy and the heavy lifting has been done and I don't think anybody could get an eight point nine million dollar building down to a little over three million dollars without all the hard work of the committee members right. so it's not something that we just said okay let's spend money and build a square box and put trucks in it right that's not what the committee was about and that's not what we wanted to provide the town we wanted to provide a cost effective solution to provide a building that provides the efficiencies and the workload can be handled by the DPW workers. Right. So if you'd like to stay tuned now, there's going to be another video that will play after our presentation. And hopefully you'll see this one and pass it on and have everybody else look at it too. If they can't watch it, make, make sure that you at least tell them what we've said. And, you know, it will be online. Um, that, at some point, you'll be able to find it on YouTube as well, and you'll be able to stream it. Um, so we're really hoping that you're really going to go to that uh, ballot box this year and vote for this DPW garage because it's not going to be any cheaper. It's going to be what we need, and it's going to do what we need it to do.
And if you're in the if you're in the camp of doubters, I would ask you to please go and visit this. Go and visit the building yourself. Get with it, Adam. Adam yeah. will te- step you through, and when yeah. Adam steps you through, you'll actually be able to see what we're talking about. Right. If you have any doubts that this may not that you're not sure you can support it, I would feel really comfortable by saying it. Once you saw the current site, I think we could win you over. So. And if you'd like to be in touch with either, either myself or Dan, you can find us on the website through the town council. Sure. And we'd be more than happy to talk to you over the phone about it. Call me Maybe anytime. explain something else or, you know, maybe we'll even set up the time to go down there and meet with you if we've got time to, sure. to head down to the DPW garage. But yep. Adam's been very good about it. Rick Seymour has been very good about it. And they'd be more than happy to take you through. You can always call Town Hall and get our phone numbers at any time. And that all being said, I'd also like to thank Justin and uh, Nicholas from our uh, audiovisual department for allowing us to steal some of their extra time and put on this uh, presentation for the residents of Merrimack. Great. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you. The CPW garage was built in 1973 when the population of Merrimack was probably one third of what it is right now. Just to give you some perspective about 1973, I graduated high school in 1973 and this building has been in operation ever since. Not too many changes have been made and the ones that have been made have sort of been piecemeal. Um, It's important that the efficiencies and the safety of this building are maintained so that the people that work within those buildings don't have any issues in the future. The Highway Operations Building is basically a large warehouse building with partition walls which have been created throughout the years to cordon off admin areas such as personnel, uh, locker room, lunchroom, break rooms, uh, reception area, and uh, supervisory offices. I work in the highway department and have done so for the town of Merrimack for 37 years. I came to Merrimack back in 1976 when this garage was first built. The uh, garage started to be, uh, we started outgrowing the garage as soon as we moved in. Um, We have a huge building and the first thing that we did was we built a, a small admin area that in very short time had to be added on and and developed further. Uh, We had no locker rooms. We had very minimal uh, admin space. The original admin office was 9 foot by 20 foot uh, for the entire admin function of of the garage. Uh, And most of the work, uh, we never had a capital reinvestment. Uh, We've done things that uh, highway people, who people tend to think about working out on the road, we became our own carpenters and we added on and we added on and we added on. The... Uh, electrical uh, facility has also been added on every time, every couple of years when we made an addition or so-called improvement, uh, the electrical system was what I call jury rigged, um, expanded, expanded, expanded. And as a result of that, uh, nothing was built for the future at that point. We were just kept t- taking care of what can we get by with today, what can we get by with today. Personnel spaces themselves are quite substandard. A lot of the offices and rooms have been created by highway staff throughout the years. Uh, We've got a locker room that's much too small for the number of people that we employ here. It's very crowded. It's carved out of what used to be part of a utility room um, with a a workshop area. Uh, It's basically a glorified utility cabinet with some lockers inside. Uh, We don't have enough bathroom facilities for the people that work here. One toilet and two urinals for almost 30 people. We have a rather small uh, lunchroom and a a training slash break room for the people. Um, If we have all hands here in a snowstorm or other emergency event, uh, it becomes quite cramped and hard to get everybody everybody in there to get their meals and and get back out on the road, Um, not to mention holding effective training for a staff that size. The the storms that uh, once once, uh, we get here at the beginning of a storm and we tend to be here 24, 30, 
and I've seen over 36 hours. Uh, the employees, as they come back and need these breaks, they have no place to go. We have straight back chairs. We have uh, couches that were donated by one employee or, the, or another. It, it, it truly is not a, a restful environment knowing that we're going to be asking the employees to, to, to s stick around. As a former plow operator, uh, you, you would have to be there to truly understand that, that uh, a, a good rest can give you pay big dividends uh, towards the end of the storm. We like to think that the town of Merrimack taxpayers have four major investment areas that they make on an annual basis, and those are personnel, facilities, vehicles, and their roads. And we like to think that this project incorporates all four of those major investment areas. Uh, as we now take care of this town uh, 37 years later, the, uh, the, the floor space in the workshop area uh, that at the current time, takes up uh, bay space and parking space and at the ready, um, is, makes everything at a premium. Some of the other space issues that we have with the current garage are being able to pre-stage winter operations equipment before a storm. So ideally, we'd be able to load a plow truck up with sand and salt and bring it inside the building where it's climate controlled and that material will not freeze in the back of the truck. If a call goes out at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., Foreman calls an operator, they can come in, punch in, do their pre-trip inspection inside the building where they don't have to clear off the snow and uh, ice off the equipment already to check it out, do the pre-trip inspection, hop in, start it up and pretty much roll out and get onto the roads. Right now none of that can happen. The operator has to come in, clear off half an inch or an inch of snow, warm the vehicle up, do somewhat of a pre-trip inspection, then get loaded up and then get on the road so we could have quite a bit of operational efficiencies gained by being able to pre-stage equipment in the garage. Due to the current space constraints we can only fit about four large pieces of winter equipment in the garage out of, out of 20 or so. There's an industry rule of thumb for mechanics in their shop space in which you should account for at least a bay and a half per mechanic that you have on staff. And the reason why it's not just a single bay per mechanic is that if you have an oversized piece of equipment that might spill over into a second bay or if you have equipment that's come in, been towed from a, from a road call, um, towed into the garage, and you're, you don't have that part on hand, um, it's going to be a week, a week and a half until you can get that part in. The mechanic needs to be employed doing something else in the meantime, so uh, you have a little bit of leeway with your, with your bay space if you use that bay and a half per mechanic thumb roll. So right now we have a lot of spillover issues where if the, the bays on the equipment maintenance side of the garage fill up with equipment, police, fire, um, public works, any other of the divisions in town, um, maintenance spills over and now has to take place on the highway side and there are no uh, lubrication handling systems, air, uh, electrical connections, lifts. Um, it's quite, quite a bit more difficult to get work done on the highway um, bays of the garage than in the equipment maintenance side. So a new project would make much, much more sense, more bays for the mechanics to, to do their work and keep all that equipment maintenance within one area rather than spilling over into a second. They really are too crowded. Uh, when you have to walk around a fire truck and have to step over things uh, to get to the other end of that truck, um, it's, it's a hazard waiting to happen. There's no elbow room. Uh, it, it, it's just not, it's not safe whatsoever. One of the benefits of the current building is that it's steel frame construction, which has held up reasonably well throughout the years. The exterior cladding, insulation, and roofing, and certainly all the utilities inside the building should be overhauled, but uh, to be able to reuse that existing skeleton of steel allows us to uh, save a lot of money to get the same amount of uh, final floor space. Um, but also to give the highway division its own area for storage and staging as well as workshops and cold uh, um, tool or equipment storage. But also this increased workshop space will allow you to avoid tripping over everything as you try to find the tool or piece of equipment that you're looking for. By utilizing the existing building with a full rehab as well as adding an additional building, we solve a problem that is a 40-year-old building and we come into compliance with existing regulations. Safety of our employees is one of the big things we'd like to address with this new facility. Our systems in this building, some of them are 35 to 40 years old. 
electrical systems such as air, fire sprinkler, gas. Some of these need serious upgrades, but they also need to better suit what we do now. I'm sure in 1973 it was hard to envision what we would do in 2013, but it's quite a bit different than what we did back then. So with the new facility, being able to get the personnel spaces removed from the exhaust that we're currently subjected to, uh, dust, grinding, welding, air compressors which fire off throughout the day, welding arcs, any host of safety issues that we have just by the, the fact that we have personnel spaces inside the industrial working facility. Um, just to be able to get those spaces out of the building itself would be a great leap forward for us. When a snowstorm or a windstorm comes and you see branches and snow all over the roads, the DPW staff here takes the time to go out and make sure that the roads are safe and your homes are safe from fallen trees. It's time that that safety be given back to the DPW staff by giving them a safe and efficient environment to work within.